Hi everybody. So today we're going to be talking about uh, writing Gherkin for API testing, including SOAP services and REST services. So this will be a brief overview of um, kind of like a standard f couple formats that you could use for writing your Gherkin that can be easily uh, automated using um, any kind of REST client within your the language of your choice. So in this, so in this example, we have um, a just an example of a kind of a standard login request and response. So <clears throat> in this example, we have the given the user log connects to the authentication service. When the user sends a login request using you know, some JSON file, then uh, so a little bit about. Um, the automation that would go behind each one of these. Um, <clears throat> I've used a couple uh, different uh, REST clients in the past. Uh, I prefer to use Ruby with uh, some of the RESTful gems and uh, for SOAP services I've used Savon in the past. Um, <clears throat> but with this uh, first step essentially what I would do was would be I would set up my uh, which endpoint I'm connecting to and which operation I'm going to be sending. So based on, you know, maybe my environmental variables and my uh, the service that I'm connecting to here, I should be able to get all that information. So this would just be setting up that client that I'm going to be sending it out on. This would actually be, um, after I make that connection to the client, this would actually be sending out the request. So. I would um, send out the the login request using um, this JSON file, and I would just uh, likely I would have a JSON file for each one of my different scenarios that I'm sending, and these would these would contain pretty much all the data that I would need to send for this particular scenario. Uh, the thing is with this though, once I send out the request, generally the clients have a callback. So when in the step that I send the request, I'm also going to be getting the response back. So you'll likely have to pass, uh, save this response off so that way you can validate it in a secondary step. So in this, I'm sending out the request and getting the response back. Um, and then in the next step, I'm actually taking that response that I got and validating that it wasn't some kind of server error, that it was, you know, a success, um, HTTP success that I got back. Um, and then this one, I'm actually comparing the data that comes back. So you could um, get away with just um, validating the response that came back. But uh, with some of the clients, they won't actually give you a response. They'll just tell you what error code you got back. Um, that's why I've broken this out, just so I could catch that earlier if need be. Um, with this one, we have our login success.json. Um, that's just an example of what a uh, what you might have for a JSON. We have another one here called login response.json. Uh, and what it has here is, you'll see, this is just uh, kind of an example of what a login response might look like. Uh, generally, we'll have uh, you know we'll set, we'll have what the user was logged in as, and maybe you know what their username is, what their capabilities are. Um, but almost always, there's some kind of session ID or token that comes back. Uh, and in this one, we've got um, this token here. It's around 444, uh, 544 characters. Um, now you might say, okay, well that token's going to be random. That's going to be a generated token. So how do I validate? this response exactly and see that's that's the thing is is a lot of these responses that come back they'll have some kind of uh, dynamic data either a date or a unique identifier or something so that way you can't compare an exact um, your exact response from the service with what you've saved off earlier so uh, my solution has been in the past for that is to uh, provide some kind of keyword and um, then what your data specifying is. So, you know, this keyword I have here is regular expression, 
regex and in my automation code I would look for that regular express that regex keyword and if it's there I know okay well I don't want to verify this field exactly I want to use this pattern that it provides so in this one where uh, we're saying that I want to match a reg regex followed by that has Q S D K followed by a space followed by um, the dot and four so this means any character of length 400 uh, 545 characters so if you look here this ends up being uh, I believe five 544 characters so this is actually one less so that would this now would match that because really I don't care that um, what this string is whenever I'm automating this I just care that it gave me one back um, you should inside of your in, your uh, unit test is where you should be validating that this is actually a valid token um, in later tests you'll you know maybe you'll inadvertently be testing this um, but I as far as for this specific test I just want to make sure that something came back with uh, that matches my criteria so being a certain length would be my criteria for this one so <clears throat> that's uh, this one here uh, you could also have a scenario where you you know many times if you're working in banking you'll have like a transaction request but in order to make a transaction request you have to have the session ID or the authentication token um, from the user so in this one we're authenticating using this JSON file and then we're actually going to be saving that off because this is a very common kind of scenario where you have to authenticate first and then everything after that we'll have to use that as well so with that um, we're connecting to the transaction service and then the user is sending the uh, get transaction request using get transaction request .json. Now, what you'll likely have to do is you'll likely have to have um, a spot in the get transaction request.json where you have an indicator that says, hey, I need to paste my, my uh, current session ID here. So <clears throat> this would probably uh, look for anywhere where you, know, you have a keyword that says current session ID here, and it would paste that in before sending it. Uh, but overall, these these steps end up being exactly the same, other than they are they become a little bit dependent on each other. And really, as far as web services go, you're going to have the step dependency. There's not really any way around that, because um, in most things, you don't want one step to be on, um, dependent on another step. But with uh, services, you're only doing one action really you're sending a request and getting a response back in this indication we're sending two requests and getting two responses back but it's still you know a single action that we're breaking down into a couple different readable steps so that you, anybody can understand what the expected what the actions and expected results are um, but by using you know this the standardized format you could easily create um, you know, maybe I want to log, try logging in as uh, several different kinds of users. So maybe I want to try to log in as an admin, or maybe I want to try to log in as a Superman. Uh, you know, these. <clears throat> this makes it so that I can easily log into this. And a lot of people will have, will already have a lot of these scenarios laid out in spreadsheets, um, so that you would just be transforming them into like a uh, data table. So like this is an example where I've automated, you know many of these datas so <clears throat> I'm logging uh, I'm authenticating as admin I'm sending a get transaction request one expecting it to be successful and then uh, validating that it matches my transaction response one and the you know, like in the last one I'm logging as a super user um, sending an invalid token request uh, JSON uh, making sure that it comes back as a failure and making sure I got the, the expected authentication error so this is just an example of how you um, could, v with very simple steps or very minimal steps developed, um, kind of make it so that you could test any of your web services uh, inside of these simple steps.
So that's all I have uh, for this video. Uh, thanks for watching, everyone. Um, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to contact me. Um, otherwise, have a good day.